want to get nuts. Let's get nuts. And here we go. It's the comic, 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 comic book book. Man, you come right out of a comic book. Welcome back to the Comic Book Bullies with Nurse New Bullet, your host Leroy, aka It's Been Three Years. Take your damn mask off in public with my co-host. Uh yeah, this is Eli, aka Squadron, Squadron, <laughs> <laughs> Squadron Supreme Pizza. <laughs> there you go. Coming soon to Taco Bell. <laughs> yeah, we're back with the episode. Like I said, we got a lot of stuff we got to talk about, even though we don't have a lot of stuff we got to talk about. We got to do our whole wall just making shit up, thing. man. This is like, yeah, we, we, we ain't got shit to talk about. Yeah, honestly, yeah, we kind of are. But when we don't have shit to talk about, that's when we have the most shit to talk about. I feel I'm, like this. I'm yeah. watching the Flash trailer right now because I know. <laughs> well, Dan, you didn't have to do research, man. When, when, when did we ever do research here? We're, we're going to talk <laughs> about the movie. Flash trailer? Oh, I, I better watch it then. <laughs> <laughs> I probably should have two, six, four, hit record. Hey, uh, Jake, the, Jake, Jake's hey, in the house. What up, Jake? Give us something on, to Jake. talk about. <laughs> yeah, because we have nothing to talk about. Because nothing happened. Here's the thing. Here's the reason we don't have anything to talk about. Now, this episode, because I told Eli that I was going to do an hour and a half. No, I was going to do a two-hour and a half episode this week on Street Fighter Six demo. Oh, that's right. Right. What up with that? But here's the problem. I didn't play it. Oh. So. Damn it. Yeah. Sorry. I was, sorry, I was Eli. counting on that, man. Sorry, I, I, Eli. I, I, I did I, all I my homework. I know, because I, I told you I was going to do that. You was like, I'm not doing anything. I'm just waiting for that. I didn't even come through for it. As so in homework, I meant I looked at a lot of Chun-Li cosplay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you see the screen? When did you do that? Did you review that? You reviewed I, um, that on here. No, I didn't. Well, kind of, sort of. I saw, like, the last half. So I really, I, I don't know. I saw the last half of Scream. Um. And uh, I missed the beginning kill scene, which to me is probably the best part of every Scream movie. That's the whole point. Yeah. Just yeah. Kill, and yeah. then I saw the last half. I saw the reveal, you know, who the killer was, which is usually for me the worst part of every Scream movie. Right. Even <laughs> so though it's want... usually, you know, it's completely user predictable. Yeah. You don't want me talking about this. <laughs> yeah. But and he I... did want you to talk about because he did post it earlier this week. Y'all watch. Y'all gonna review it? Like, no. But. Jake, I got Jack Harlow for you, but not now. In the episode, I'll tell you what I think about it. I do it just to make before I thoroughly bash it. I want to make sure about it. So yeah. All right. Anyway, we actually do got something to talk about. Let's talk about something. What we're gonna talk about first off before we get into anything else, before we get into the Wall of Moria, we gotta talk about. We're gonna talk about something that we should talk about earlier. Uh, Bud Light. Now we're gonna talk about Bud Light because Bud Light has been canceled by you know who certain people. Because of this, uh, there's a transgender TikToker, I guess TikToker, but <laughs> she was. And I'm not trying. I'm not trying to be. I'm just saying this. <laughs> She's a TikToker, but uh, doing a pro- a promo on her TikTok page, like she said, Bud Light gave her the Bud Light with her face on it, you know, to, like advertised Marsh Madison like that. And of course, when that happened. You know what happened after that. People got upset, like Kid Rock, for instance. This is how he felt about Bud Light after that. So that was and on let his me point out that he had to buy them to shoot them. That is true. <laughs> there were that time people were protesting if they die or, they, or to burn up or shoot, thing like that. They're still putting money in the people's pockets. So yeah. here's my thing about this. So, like I said, I know people are upset on this side and that side about what Bud Light's doing and everybody's boycotting Bud Light like that. This is what I want everybody that doesn't give a shit about what's going on to care. Now, it's people that care, the people that don't give a shit about care. Don't, people don't give a shit either way. Oh, Here's is this for you, me? You're doing this yes, for me? Yes, for you, for Jake, <laughs> for everybody else. This is this is free game for anybody that's listening. Okay, so what I want you to do, buy stock in Bud Light. That's what you do. Think about Dude. it. Think about it. Dude, 
I'm going to check that shit right now. Go ahead. Exactly. That's the <laughs> I'm thing. jumping Anytime. on my shit right Yes, now. because here's the thing. It doesn't matter how mad people get. People will never be mad forever. So, yes, the Damn. man right now is still high. i get paid for another two weeks, too. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what you need to do right now. It's, 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 cancel code, cancel something, stock in it. Because you get mad, move on to the next thing you're mad at. And that thing you were mad at a week ago, now has gone back up to regular stock. Boom. Free, no, it's, free. So we give stock tips on here also. You don't know who Kip Rich is. Oh, it's Anheuser Bush. Uh, Eli, look at this comment. Look at this comment, man. Who's Kid Rock? Is it good? To, dude, you don't need to know. If you, <laughs> if you do not know who Kid Rock is, consider yourself lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even a demographic, and I don't know who Kid Rock is. But anyway, that's that's neither here nor there. Yeah, he's uh, a rapper slash rocker slash country singer slash. How does that even work? I don't even. He was a shitty rapper who turned shitty country singer. <laughs> how does that even work? How do you even go from rap to country? I don't. I don't know. That's... Yeah. But anyway, that's what we got. So let's get down to the wall of Memorial. Let's get on there. See, that's how we. When well, we don't have anything to talk about, we got too much to talk about. Yeah. Now I'm, I'm talking about Kid Rock. Fucking. <laughs> talk about. I, one of us need to talk about Kid Rock at all. <laughs> I don't know him. You don't like him. So, yeah, what's the point? <laughs> yeah, I, I I, I, thought Kid Rock sucked before it was cool to think Kid Rock sucked. <laughs> See, I don't know what that music it, it, I just imagine it sucked, but I thought maybe other people like it, I guess. I don't know. But, yeah. It's mm-hmm. not. So, yeah. Anyway, moving on. First about the Walter Moore. We're going to talk about Harry Bell and his name. Actually, we we'll talk about Harry Belafonte because his thing. I don't know anything about Harry Belafonte. Like, I know he's a big thing. I, I, I'm, I, know, I know. You don't know the banana oh, song? I banana song. I didn't know that was. <laughs> I didn't know. I just thought it was some guy. I didn't know he was that deep into it that he actually had hits and bangers and things like that. You know, I just hear one thing about Harry Belafonte. He was important to the civil rights movement. Okay, what did he do? You're just saying he's important. What did he do? Then I decided to look it up. And I've looked up stuff he did. I'm like, oh. He did a lot of stuff. So, like I said, we're going to start off with what you just said, the banana song. Yes, because let's go a little bit deeper into the banana song. You know the song. Jake may not know the song because <laughs> at this point, I'm not putting it. It's back in the hey, 80s, Jake, Jake. you ever see Beetlejuice? It was in You Beetle ever see Beetlejuice? <laughs> hey, yo. Me say that. Me say that. Me say that. Hey, yo. Yeah. <laughs> when they was all possessed, they didn't take that. That was, uh, and I know I was in the wrong key. I don't care. Whatever. Uh, the point was is that Harry Belafonte back in the 50s. Okay, so we all know about Bob Marley. Basically, Harry Belafonte was Bob Marley before Bob Marley. So you got your Caribbean music, you got reggae, you got patois, you got dance hall before all that. You had calypso, kind of like the same thing, but it had the Caribbean style feel. So Harry Belafonte was the king of calypso. That was his style. That was what he did. He was like the uh the first crossover artist to bring caribbean music to white people sorry that's not where i think but yeah that's basically what happened to so that's why he became oh. a big... <laughs> let's see. Uh, he He's don't about know to get canceled does. and shit but what did he say <laughs> oh god okay Let me... <laughs> no <laughs> he's not white Bob marley <laughs> oh man so yeah all right, so that's the thing about that. So he was a King Calypso, King Caribbean music. Like I said, he had Dayo. He had what was the other song? It was also in, in the uh, Beetlejuice. Uh, something oh, about uh, shake, 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 you know, yeah, yeah. shake, 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 Sonora. That was him also. So that's what he did. So he led a, led a lot of Caribbean music. So like I said, I knew about him because he was. I thought he was this actor slash singer. No, he was a singer slash actor. The the music came first. He moved the needle with with music. So his music was his bread and butter. Jump now, in the line. The, the line. Okay. Yeah. I, believe I believe you. you. Yeah. We're both in the uh, wrong key. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I can't flow like that. No. <laughs> uh, what else we got on here? Okay, so like I said, we got that. We also well, got... I, my my earliest... For me, it wasn't Beetlejuice. He was on the Muppets. He was so, on the Muppets doing Deo. <laughs> doing Deo. And it was hilarious because I remember Fozzie Bear. Now, for kids, Jake, I don't know if you know... Who the Muppets are <laughs> because we're a bunch of old fuckers. Yeah, we used to watch the Muppets. <laughs> it was like it was like Sesame Street for like your dad, you know, for not right. But it but it wasn't like Kitty. No, like Muppet. Like you watch it now, Muppets had like like adult jokes, but it wasn't like raw raunchy jokes. They were just kind of like it only you kind of. Yeah. 
but I remember Harry Belafonte was on the Muppets and they were doing the Deo song and Fozzie Bear couldn't get on beat and it was hilarious. They're like, Deh, <laughs> Deh, Deh. <laughs> he was like, he kept. <laughs> I remember just that was pretty funny. So I, that was like my my earliest remem- memory of that song from the Muppets. So that's how old I, again, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> So, like I said, the Muppets were a great thing, uh, Harry Belafonte. But like I said, we got to get into some other stuff that he got into also, because like I said, he actually did a lot of stuff. Now, we also got to talk about what is I'm about to click. Oh, I know I'm about to click. I'm not going to click that. Anyway, we're just going to talk about it. All right. So, with Harry Belafonte, uh, he was also a big part of the Civil Rights Movement. Now, what I mean by the big part for the Civil Rights Movement is that since he was part of, like, he was good friends with Martin Luther King, and he was pretty much more or less bankrolling. The civil rights movement because there wasn't a whole lot of millionaires they had in the civil rights movement helping the movement won't so he was one of them so when uh, my, uh martin luther king in birmingham you know harry was bank time they got arrested he bailed them out since he was this big celebrity he got other big celebrities also like marlon brando and you know other people like that to kind of like pay attention to uh civil rights movement also because like i said he was a, a big time celebrity so he got the ball movement on them. So he got a lot of stuff going on. Did the Dale song. <laughs> like I said, uh, he also starred in uh, Carmen Jones. Not the first all black movie. Like I said, this was Black Panther before Black Panther. But it was the biggest black pan- uh, biggest black movie they had at the time. It was like back in the 60s. You know, uh, Dorothy Dandridge played Carmen Jones. First time a black actor ever got nominated for an Oscar. You know, he played uh, the main role in that one. So did a lot of stuff. Awesome. Just want to talk about that and move on. Oh, coming in hot. What, what, Jake, what you got now? In my puppet, I don't, I don't get that one. <laughs> then maybe, maybe Eli knows that one. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's I don't know. Yeah. Or maybe it's younger than our time. Maybe that's why we don't know it. <laughs> <laughs> maybe some said on on TikTok we don't know. Uh, but yeah, rest in peace to Harry Belafonte. Yeah. Okay. Good journey, sir. Yeah, that being said, now I can move on to the next. No, nope, nope. We're going to talk about some good stuff. We're going to talk about Jerry Springer. Well, that's not good. We're going to talk about Jerry Springer. Okay, so we're going to talk about Jerry Springer. Like I said, here's the thing. I didn't know much about Harry Belafonte, but I was upset about Jerry Springer. I'm sorry. I was. I don't know. And it, it was just me. And like a lot of people were more upset about Jerry Springer than they were Harry Belafonte. I don't know what it was because black people just love Jerry Springer. Not Jerry Springer. Did a lot of things. Like I don't know if you know who he is, Jake. He you are a, not. No, that's not him. That was that's uh, not him. That's why. Even though he dabbled in there, no. he did the other wild stuff. He was just all over the oh, place. There's always Basically. fights going on at his show. He had all the fights going on and stuff okay. like that. And plus, if you don't know, he was in Austin Powers. <laughs> you know that scene there. <laughs> what if he, my dad was in the world? They had that scene right there. That scene where everybody just fight you know, these crazy stories, like my. Uh, my transgender slept with my boyfriend or some shit like that, you know, and they just come out and just start fighting for just no reason whatsoever. But my favorite episode of Jerry Springer before he got like really, really wild, you know, episode like a, a gang member, you know, from the Crips had a KKK member and a third guy, I don't know, but a third guy, you don't need to be on stage with him. And all three of them was on stage at the same time. Jerry Springer's just like, why don't you guys talk it out? Why you don't like each other? And of course, five seconds later, a brawl broke out all over the head. <laughs> Is he the, the one who had that day. bodyguard, the bald guy, the big bald guy? Steve. Steve yeah, had his okay. own show. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Jerry Springer <laughs> back in the day. I have to go to school. Yeah, because Jerry Springer played every day you came back to school. It was that. So it gets got wilder and wilder. And a lot of people said that Jerry Springer, we shouldn't be celebrating Jerry Springer because he made black people look bad and play black people stereotypes. But here's the thing. Jerry had everybody looking bad. There was more white trash on his show than, than ghetto ass black people out there just acting the fool. So he was equal opportunity trash. Like anybody on these <laughs> come on the show and that's it. <laughs> so. He was on the X Files. He was on an episode of the X Files too. Was he? As himself. Like yeah. yeah. So like I said, big thing, big staple in Chicago. He kind of killed the talk show of uh of the 90s. Because the thing was, he became such a big thing that the other talk shows try to emulate what he was doing, but it doesn't work. Like Oprah can't have, you know, gang members and KKK members on there. It's Nick fighting everybody because she don't have bodyguards. And shit. She can't do that. Sally Jeffrey Raphael can't do that. Hell, what was that one? Ricky Lake? No, not Ricky Lake. Uh, it was Ricky Lake. One of them had, well, somebody got shot. You remember that one? On the show? Not on the show. It was afterwards. 
it was really oh, mixed up. I don't know if it was Ricky Lake, was Raphael chick or was somebody else? Sarah Jessica Raphael. I remember her. Sarah Jessica Raphael. I don't know. Somebody did it. They did something on there where afterwards somebody got shot and you got anyway. But like the, these shows were just getting just out of hand because everybody was trying to keep up with you. I vaguely remember that. Yeah. Uh, that's on the tip of my tongue now. Yeah. So it was why because they kept the trying one to about the gay guy. The one about the gay guy. He professed his love to his best friend on this show, and his best friend shot the show, and then the show got canceled because Jenny Jones. Kept... That Je- was her name. Was, was that it? her name? The one about the gay guy. Even Jake knows it. Yes, Jake knows about it too. So that's the thing because they had to try to keep up with the crazy shit Jerry Springer was doing, and they kind of just killed TV shows all. I mean, she's a comedian. Oh, she did have a show. Yeah, Jenny Jones. Yeah, Jenny Jones. I do remember Jenny Jones. She wasn't a very good comedian, but yeah. Well, she had a talk show. That's what I remember from. Oh well. So, yeah, that's what I want to say. So, so rest in peace to Jerry Springer. Geraldo. I remember Geraldo had a show. Geraldo got a show. He tried to do the crazy shit on it. Got his nose broken. And he got his yeah. He got busted. In the fucking nose. <laughs> a big brawl happened on that. I was like, damn. Jerry. See, that's the thing because everybody tried to keep up with Jerry. Keep up with Jerry. And I, and well, I remember Jerry. Geraldo in the eighties. He, he, I hated Geraldo because he was always well, see, coming Geraldo down on. on is it like what he is now? You know. Yeah, he he yeah he was always like talking shit about metal and shit. Like, well, he like super preferred. He was on news for a while. Yeah. Uh, she got canceled. Well, she got fired after that. So, oh, <laughs> yeah, that shit went under. And so, yeah, that's messed up. So, want to say rest in peace to Jerry Springer. So, yeah, yeah. good journey, sir. What do we have next? Where is that good one? Uh, oh, here we go. Found it. Okay. So, also want to say, <laughs> uh, piss. Carol Bryant, where are you? Where are you? Let's find you. Okay, so people don't know who Carol Bryant is. Carol Bryant. Oh, this. Me... Oh, yeah, man. Gotta break it down. I got to talk about it. Here's the thing. This made black people so happy. We was upset about Jerry Springer, but when this happened, we were so happy. So I got to talk about this for a second. So, yes, for those who don't know who Carol Bryant is, Carol Bryant, for one thing, is uh, the woman that lied on the stand for Emmett Till. They got him brutally murdered to the point that he was unrecognizable. And not only that, she testified on the stand. She didn't get arrested for it. Never served time in jail. For it. None of the people that killed Emma uh, Till for it. She's responsible for it. Probably tied to KKK also. We don't know, but we kind of do because we all know what the KKK is. They kind of migrated to politics to kind of rebrand themselves. Oh, which right. Kind of makes sense. <laughs> yeah. All right. Because we because if it makes sense, her nephew became governor of Mississippi. So, yeah, like a few years ago. So, yeah, that's the thing about that. Uh, like I said, she lived way longer than she should have, longer than Emmett Till should have and kill. And saying that black people should be out there, like eight or ninety would have been not justice. I'm like, man, let us have things, let's just have peace once, you know, justice. So from that, you know, she don't know why she's dead and shit like that. So yeah, I want to say uh, fuck you very much, rest in hell, uh, to Carolyn Bryant. So can move on yeah. to the next part of the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, let's move on. Let's see where are we going with this next. Uh, you know what? Let's keep it breezy. Let's talk about the box office. Eli, give it to me. What is the number one movie? I'm not sure. Not a Marvel movie. That's that's done. So you can just forget about saying Marvel movies. Oh, but. is it like the Mar? I heard the Mario movie is like killing it. The Marvel movie. The Mario movie is killing it. Right. Uh, let me see where I can throw this up there right here. Oh, I didn't get a thing of it. That's okay. Anyway. Mario movie right now, no more movie in the week. Uh, Evil Dead Rise is still number two. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, you always count on horror movies to make money. <laughs> yeah, money all the time. But Mario is the first um, move of 2023 to hit a billion dollars. Let me see if I can find that graph. No, oh, well, yeah, that makes yeah. Sense. I'm matter of fact, I'm gonna, I got a list of the 2023. Is this it? I think that's it. Let's see. I think that's it. Uh, so not only is it at a billion, it's still climbing. So you got. Super Mario Brothers at a billion. Next is Ant Man and Watch Quantumania, which is not even half of what it's doing. John Wick hanging in there, Creed three. So not a really strong box office for this year. But like I said, Marvel's gonna keep because, like I said, it's thirty it's worth of yeah, forty. Now that I think about it, almost forty years worth of branding. Everybody knows it. Kids know it. Parents, uncles know it. So, and it's, yeah. I'm here. It's a good movie. And Jack Black might win an Oscar for that damn song. That Peach song is everywhere now. Uh, Sisu, 
I don't. Yeah, I figured. Yeah, I I figured. Is that a Mario character? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was what came out this week. <laughs> Or it may come out next week. I don't know when it came out. It's like John Wick meets. Oh, that's that Nazi guy, like the John Wick Nazi killer or something. Yeah, something like okay. that. So, that looks dope. Is that out already? I don't know. We we need to do more research on this show. I yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I I don't know why we talk about this. Shit. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> We're just, just the box office to... news to two dumb motherfuckers who don't know shit about it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, did that? Come? I don't know. What is that? Is that a Mario character? You know. <laughs> What's the number one box office? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe say, okay, so let's move on past that. So now we can talk about that trailer that Eli didn't watch. We can talk about the Flash trailer. I just watched it. I just watched it. You did just watch it. Thank you for doing your homework. Subtitle and there was no sound, but I watched it. Okay. Did you watch it in English or Japanese? Well, English, because I read the subtitle. <laughs> Oh, you got to no, watch I mean, I had it. I had it sound down in, a, in, in a, the caption. CISO came out last week? Oh, wow. I, shit. <laughs> okay. Never mind. Well, well, hopefully, hopefully it'll be on the fucking uh, streaming soon. Hey, uh, Jimmy's in the house. Up, Jimmy? Watch it. Somebody watch Sisu. Jimmy, tell us what Sisu is and how much you liked it and what's the plot. Spoil it. We don't care. Just just go for it. Because <laughs> we don't even know what it is. We, we no, got that, that's that John Wick Nazi killer guy. Oh, like, it, it's not a vampire movie? No, it's like it's like he's a not he kills Nazis. So John Wick style. It's like World War II. It looks cool. I just didn't know it was out already. I'll check it out when it when it comes out or, or whenever, you know. Yeah. All right. I figure I will. Now, listen thing. Okay, so like I said, the fast trailers just dropped. I know this dropped like like early this week. And I know in internet speed, this is like to go when this movie drops. I know everybody's already had. But here's the thing. I'm gonna let Eli do a top ten things you missed on this trailer. So go. <laughs> top ten. <laughs> Superman? Top- or the, <laughs> not Superman. Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Batman. Batman, 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 and Batman, and Batman, and Batman. That's what you need to know about this trailer, because that's what I want to talk about this trailer. So we're not going to do this in-depth uh, new rock star. Frame in- by frame. Frame with all that. We're just going to talk about the meat of what we need to talk about. The main thing you need to take away from this trailer is Batman. That's it, because this is a heavily Batman-centric trailer. Uh, not only that, uh, remember this shot, Eli? I don't, but that looks cool. <laughs> okay, that was from the trailer. But I'm saying, do you remember from an old movie? I remember, oh, like, yeah, I remember at Batman 89, yeah. That's I what know. they want you to do. That's what they want. That's what they want you to do. They want you to think about Batman 89. They want you to think about it. You want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. So they just yeah. throw all this establish and nostalgia. Just, just the right member there. berries, full of member berries. Exactly. I even heard somebody, and even if you get, even if you don't like, let's say you don't like Michael Keaton. Let's say Michael Keaton, not the king. Let's say you're too young for Michael Keaton. Jake? Jake, you know, <laughs> I'm just fucking with Jake. I love, we love Jake. <laughs> uh, but you got Batman, you got Ben Affleck in so, a gray, in a gray and blue suit, in a gray and blue suit. You got Batman, Batman, and Batman. But what if I told you, Eli, there's more Batman than that? Oh yeah, let's throw some more Batman at you. Now, see, this is our biggest hit that we got on our, our website, our, our Facebook page. This one. Now, this is from the Flash trailer. Also, is if that you look, Dark close, Knight's Metal or whatever. No, no, it's not Red Death. It's not. Okay. <laughs> and somebody else said that too. It's not a Red Death flick. But if you look closely at his suit, and I wish I could have zoomed in on it. That is the Batman Return suit repainted. If you zoom oh. in on it, that's actually he still has the Batman logo on it. So Flash is wearing a Batman suit. So they really want you to go Batman on this. Batman, 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 yeah, Batman, Batman. That's going to be in that's going to be in the movie for like 10 seconds too. <laughs> but it but it's there. That's all it needs for guys like us. That's it. <laughs> uh the Flash movie that's going to be the Batman movie. That's what I'm saying. People are already saying it. What is this like in the Spider-Verse with Batman? Like Yeah, it's like no, nah, but yeah. Flash, Flash No Way Home. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's a Flash ain't in it. So it's just like, <laughs> and, and that's my thing about it. I think this is all strategic marketing. Because we all know why. We all know why. They don't want to. They want you to be focused on Michael Keaton or even Ben Affleck or whoever else you want to be focused on. They do not want you to be focused on Ezra Miller. They don't. Now, we know the movie's going to be all about Ezra Miller. He's going to be playing not only one but two roles and stuff like that. But they want you to be focused on Batman, Batman, Batman. Because if they get focused on Ezra Miller, Ezra Miller, Ezra Miller, they're going to get people are going to get reminded of all the Grand Theft Auto shit he did last year. Even though, here's the thing. Most people 
don't even know what that shit is. Most people don't even know who he is. They don't know who's playing Flash this movie. They just see a DC movie with Batman in it. That's all they see. They don't know Ezra Miller, so they don't know all the crazy shit Ezra Miller did. So, well, honestly, that is very smart marketing on DC's part. Yeah, because we it's a miracle that this movie ever got made. <laughs> Right. Because it was announced like 10 years ago or some shit. Right, right. They kept doing it. Like Zach Snyder said, they're making a, a Flash movie. They kept yeah. pushing back, pushing back, pushing back. Yeah. Yeah. I kept rewriting, get all these directors, hiring and firing directors, hiring, firing <laughs> screenwriters. We thought they were never going to make it. And then, <laughs> and then it finally gets We made. even made a bet on this show one time that the movie wasn't going to come out on like a certain year. And it didn't come out that year. So whatever it was, I, I wanted. You might bet. have to eat a cheeseburger again. No, 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 because I, I won that bet. So <laughs> <laughs> I would have had eaten cheeseburger, but I didn't have to. So yeah. So yeah, yeah so. it's like we it's finally made and now this shit happens. It's it's kind of hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it is, but it's still coming out. So that's the thing. But it, it, it's funny that they put all in there. But they they doing very strategic marketing with it. They're trying to make sure that we're focused on this. We're looking at this and not at this, you know, oh, yeah. slight of hand. And, hey. The internet, I know the internet loves to cancel shit and get all self-righteous and shit. But hey, think about all the motherfuckers that worked on it. He, that motherfucker ain't the first, only person in this movie. Michael Keaton is in the movie. <laughs> and a bunch, yeah, all the, all, all the, go see it for all those overworked and underpaid CGI artists who did all the shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> who stayed up for days and days making the flash. Run. Right, run <laughs> slow. Yeah, now, and all the good lightning news, and shit. Yeah. Good news about it for everybody that's want to watch this movie. They have said that the Flash CGI has already been completed. Now, I know what? that sounds like well, not a big deal, but when you go to Marvel, that is not the case. They pretty much saying that Marvel movies, they work up until the release date. <laughs> and they're still working on CGI because they're so behind us. But that, this time, they actually gave them enough time to finish the shit. So when you see the movie, the CDI would be like, hey, we're, we're done. We're finished. Uh, they finished movie, well, not a few years ago. And no, 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 actually, they didn't finish, Jake. What they did, they finished principal photography. They finished most of it. But a lot of stuff they had to reshoot, they were still reshooting while Ezra Miller was on the run from his Grand Theft Auto bullshit. Because he was hiding out on the Warner Brothers lot shooting the movie. So, yeah. Uh, early reviews, been good. you can't trust it. Can't trust that. Yeah. They're paid shields. Either, Let's be either, honest with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. The- all, all these big tentpole movies always have early good reviews. Right. Or else I mean, there's but, an embargo. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, let's be honest with you, Eli. If they invite, if Warner Brothers invited me to their stress, uh, stress, uh, press screening, you know, and I met, you know, all the celebrities and shit, got to shake hands with Michael Keaton and shit like that. Ezra Miller. You got to meet Ezra Miller. And shit. Yeah. You can <laughs> review. Because they dance ain't going to invite me for a movie to come out if I do that shit. No, they ain't going to do that. So, no. I'm going to uh, kiss this movie's ass as much as I can if they invite me to that shit. So, yeah, you can't you can't trust any of that shit. That's, that was the Marvel method. That was the Marvel method right there. You want to know why those MCU movies got, like, all 90s and 95s and shit like or dark, like, 85s? Like, that's why. Because they were inviting all these critics and shit like that to uh, press screenings, having to meet Robert Downey Jr. and all this shit like that. And, look, you got to meet Scott Johansson. You gonna get, get Scott Johansson a bag? Get all that swag, the big bag of swag. Hey, there's an iPad. Exactly. A free iPad. <laughs> exactly. You're not gonna do that. You got the interview all these people that's like that. No, because if you do that, you ain't getting invited back. <laughs> Kevin yeah. Feige got his hand on your shoulder, like, so we so what do you think about our movie? You know, you're not PS5 gonna give a bad review here. on that. Free PS5 with the Avengers <laughs> <Right. game. laughs> Exactly. So you're not gonna give a bad review. Uh, so so yes, yeah, so the only review you can trust in there right now is us. Until they start inviting to this shit, then don't trust us either. So yeah. Uh, what do we got? But yeah, that's all I want to talk about the Flash thing. I don't want to do a top ten things, even though Eli did uh eight of the top ten things because he went Batman, 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 <laughs> Batman. But you know, <laughs> some other shit happened in there too. But yeah, uh, let's move on past that. What have we got next? Uh, yeah, okay. How about the CW, the CW show. CW. Yeah. I know nobody has watched this show in like 10 years. And the shit Flash? Like that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, The Flash. Nobody's watched this like that. But I just oh, want to talk about just one, one brief it. thing yeah. that happened. Green Lantern came back for one episode. Ollie? Like, what's his name? Ahmed or whatever? Yeah. Uh, uh, Stephen Amell? Yeah, he came back. Amell, Ollie, yeah. yeah, whatever whatever his name was. He came back, you know, um, which was cool. You know, we're glad he came back. 
uh what was that thing he did okay so because you know the last episode of flair i don't know if you've seen it like that basically he became a spec he became a god you know that that created this multiverse shit like that but i did not know that really Ali really? became inspector yeah you didn't know that was like the big thing yeah oh i don't remember that okay so i gotta catch up with the crisis on we have like that basically what happened was Ali died in crisis event and shit like that. i remember him dying i just don't right. remember him becoming but then he was recreated as the specter so he had to fight the anti anti-monitor one-on-one and then specter i mean Ali beat him and then like even though the anti-monitor like ate the old <laughs> universe he rebooted the new universe and that's the crisis that we have now they got a chance to like reboot everything stuff like that but this episode was cool so Ali showed up to spec and he was like hey there's this bad guy in the show that's like eating my powers or draining my powers like that so i no longer am a god i'm just a human again so now that he's a human again now he can be green arrow because green arrow got no powers he's like now i can just beat ass like green arrow and then they beat the bad he get his god powers back again and that's the end of the show only person see yes i'm the only person to still watch the hey, cw that's it i watch super superman and lois is great i still watch superman and lois is great superman and lois and that's what i'm saying i know everybody hates the cw superman and lois is a show that is better than the cw that's it yeah and of course i still watch riverdale which you has been killing riverdale. it this new season been killing it really especially if you're, uh, you're comic not book you're not fan. joking are you really no. mean it? it's all okay. comic books there's like fucking comic books with like Characters coming to life out of comic books and killing people and shit. Fucking yeah. pretty sweet. Way better than The Mandalorian. <laughs> 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 oh, I, I watched a couple episodes of the Gotham Knights. Okay. I was, you know what? I was just about to talk about Gotham Knights. Okay. I, <laughs> and well, you, 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 go, you go first before I start. Go first, okay. I, I I'm just saying that, like, it did just enough to, like, oh, shit. I better watch the next time. It's just enough. <laughs> okay, I... okay, okay, okay. Let, let me go. To, I'm glad you said that. It's like <laughs> I don't hate the show. That's the thing. I, 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 I like. I'm like. It's 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 totally cheesy and yes, it's, totally it's bad. Fluffy. It's CW. It's teeny bopper. It's all this shit like that. It's a show I should hate, but it's yeah. like it's just enough that just, like I yeah, the fucking head, head gets cut off first episode. The towel. Right. Like, I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was not expecting that. That's you know, what I'm but, saying. Like, okay, like it's, it's it's a bad show, but it's like a good bad show. It's hard I, to describe. It's hard to yeah, describe. I, I, like, I did not hate the couple episodes that I watched. I'm like, yeah, I, that's I, what know. I'm saying. Like, I, I expected to be the worst thing the CW ever made. I was ready to just shit on the show, and I watched. I was like, nah, kind of dig it, kind of okay. You know, it's yeah, it, it's not it's it's not totally terrible. <laughs> Exactly, like it's bad, but it's watching. If that makes it, it's weird. You just gotta watch the show. It's like we can't recommend it, but we do. Rick, if it makes yeah. sense, full of characters. I, I bet, like, <laughs> like Joker's daughter, and like all these like characters that you barely know. Like they made up a character, like, right? Okay, Am I the only one that's noticing they doing a will they won't they thing with Joker's daughter and Batman? Something, yeah. The they kind of doing guy. a thing. Yeah, okay. This is Fish Mooney. The character. <laughs> <laughs> right, just making up people shit like that. So yeah, yeah. but I, um, I was like, oh shit. I mean, it's okay. funny. So so so, how, how far did you make? Did you did you make it to the Joe Hill episode? Oh no, I watched like two or three episodes. I'll be honest, with you, the Joe Chill episode was actually pretty good. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know what to say, man. I thought it was actually pretty good. So I don't know. Just... Yeah, and it's funny because I do watch Riverdale, and it, it is, has a Riverdale feel to it, which a bunch is totally of teenagers fluffy. and shit. But it's yeah. like a, there's a darkness. Like I know what Riverdale is, and the why, the why I like Riverdale is because oh, we adds, know why you like Riverdale. It, yeah, that yes, yes. <laughs> I, the eye candy. I, yeah, I, 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 I'm not mad at all the ass, but you know there is like a darkness to this you know fluffy show. Whereas like Gotham Knights is like they're doing they're adding fluffiness to the darkness. You know what I mean? Right. It's like kind of opposite. You know, <laughs> it's fluffy darkness. <laughs> Whereas Riverdale is dark fluffiness. And got the nights as fluffy dark. You know, I guess that's my only analogy. If that makes the, sense. The only way I can really recommend Gotham Knights is if you watch, if you ever seen a CW show, if you ever sat through a CW show. That's all I can say. If you sat through a CW show, you can watch Gotham. Like, I can watch it. You know, so that's yeah. I can recommend like, this. Yeah, if you're like a hardcore Batman fan, you should hate it. Like you would probably hate it if you're a hardcore Batman fan, but there's just like but I said, not, there's just enough where like okay, like 
<laughs> well, that's the thing because okay, if you're a hardcore Batman fan, this show has a lot of fan service to it. Because okay, yeah, it throws a lot of people in it. Like, like, okay, spoiler alert for anybody actually watching this show. <laughs> uh, the mayor that Harvey didn't going up against is Lincoln March. Now, if you read the comic book, actually, did we review, review Court of Owls on this? No, I don't think no, we did. No, we, we were planning to, but we didn't. Okay. Anyway, Lincoln March is is a member of the Court of Owls. They hadn't revealed it yet, but in the comic, that's what he was. So the fact that he even is on this show, like, uh, you're chilling on yourself right now. So what's going on? So yeah. So it's cool. Like I said, they had Carrie Kelly, even though she don't look anything like Carrie Kelly, <laughs> but. <laughs> she fought the mutant leader. Come on, man. Oh, yeah. That's I saw that. I saw I, I yeah, I was like, that's the mutant leader. That's when I was like, okay, <laughs> this is the terrible part of this shitty ass show. Right. But, but the, I'm still not the fact mad they even me. went there. The fact they yeah. even went there. They went the to leader. yeah, they 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 added uh, they added the CW version of the mutant leader. <laughs> <laughs> Sexy mutant leader. <laughs> <laughs> like that Here, guy's a mutant. Love really? Me. That guy's a mutant. <laughs> That I'm, I'm like, hideous. Fucking, don't look yeah. at me. Don't look at my washboard abs. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, male model mutant leader. <laughs> uh, yeah, Riverdale's, Riverdale's all, all yeah, yeah. Speaking of abs, yeah, Archie's got abs, Jughead's got abs, everybody got abs. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. All right. So that's all we wanted to say about that. So let's move on there. Oh, it's another show that I actually been watching for that I actually do recommend. Let me see if I can find the show. Uh, It is on streaming. It is Citadel. That's the show I want to recommend. It's two episodes out right now on Amazon Prime. Really recommend it. What it is, it's a spy show. Bunch of spies doing spy shit. I think it's produced by the Russos, but they don't have anything to do with it. Oh, but it's is like, that the move? That that's the yeah. Why they, that's all they do is spy shit now. That's all they do is spy shit. They even stuck spy shit in the Captain America, but yeah, they just do spy shit now. But this is actually good spy shit. Even yeah. though this spy shit is just every spy shit that's ever been, you see James Bond, uh, John, Jason Bourne in it, James Bond, well, Avengers. I'm that, about to say you know, Avengers old, is basically spy shit. <laughs> yeah, like well, I'm saying no, like the old Avengers. <laughs> Like oh, the, like uh, that, Emma yeah, the and shit like that. Yeah, Emma Peel, because it's it's that she's Emma Peel. He's the other guy with the umbrella, you know, basically <laughs> that thing like that. Oh, what other spy shit? Agents of Shield. It's all because they got all this weird technology shit going on. Like that. Like okay, it's that. But here's the thing: like, so you can get mad at it what you want if you want, and be like, well, if it's just like every other thing that's ever been out, why should I watch it? I got a newsflash for you: there's no such thing as original story, not anymore. Everything that is out is reminiscent of something else. There's nothing original anymore. So the thing is, it's not what you do. It's Says what the you motherfucker is going to go watch The Flash. <laughs> right. The, I'm going to watch the 80 superhero movie that came out 10 years. Like, okay. Yeah. Which is going to be a greatest hits of all the other superheroes. <laughs> Pretty much. Flash, Basically, no way home. We just... the, Flash is, the Flash movie is the greatest hits of all the superheroes. <laughs> right. It's Flash No Way Home. We just said that. Yeah. Uh, and, and Michael Keaton is going to say every one line he ever said in all his movies. Yeah. He's going to quote Mr. Mom. He's going to quote every fucking thing he ever did. So, yeah. Bruce That's... Wayne slash Tony Stark versus. Yeah. Right. We, we've seen yeah. it. That's the thing. But it, it ain't about what you Barry do. Allen slash Peter Parker. Yeah. Right. They've already <laughs> they've been done that. So, yeah. <laughs> so, it's what you do with it. That's the thing. So, yes. But the execution of the show is high level. That's what I like about the show. The plot. It gets you first five, ten minutes, you, you're in, you're locked in. You know, she's doing the sexy spy shit. She's doing the honeypot thing. He's doing this best James Bond ripoff thing. And then he just starts shooting up shit and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, this is cool. Meanwhile, they got this will they, won't they thing going on. You know, awesome. Awesome show. I like it. Uh, and uh, who's the guy? Who's the guy? Tucci. Sam Tucci. He's in it. He's oh, okay. like the Q of the show. So, yeah. Oh, okay. The gadget yeah. maker or whatever. That, that guy, yeah. He they are that guy, yeah. So all the stuff like that. So the guy in the chair. <laughs> the guy in the chair. There you go. Now, can you move on to the next part of the podcast? Sure. Okay, we're gonna talk about the video game section. Like I said, I'm sorry. I didn't get a chance to do my three and a half hour Street Fighter tutorial on this episode, which I was planning to do. But what I will do, we'll talk about Armored Core 6 Fires of Rubicon. I'm so excited for this. <laughs> <laughs> I really I used to play the hell out of this game on PlayStation. Matter of fact, let me see if I can play the uh 
video. We're going to pull up the video. Uh, I used to play the hell out of this game uh, back on, like, PlayStation 3, 2, or like that. Oh, I just fucked something up. I don't even know what I just fucked up, but I fucked it up. Uh, yeah. Up, it, I'm fucking up left and right. Anyway, <laughs> let's get to what we're talking about. Oh, um, like I said, we, we're going to talk about Armor Core because it's basically people don't know what Armor Core is. It's basically like a Gundam thing. Okay, we got it pulled up. Cool. Let me see if I can span that. It's like a Gundam thing where you like fight mechs and shit like that, but you like make your own stuff like that. So that's what makes it so awesome. Uh, but here's the thing. Even though you got mechs and shit like that, what you're really going to be doing the whole time on the show is that you're really going to be just building your mech. Let me sit fast for this bullshit. Let's get to the good stuff. Okay. You're going to be building your mech. And you're going to spend hours and hours and hours building mechs. You're going to put feet on them. You're going to put rockets on the back of them. You're going to put jets on them. You're going to put on them. You're going to change out his eye holes and shit like that. And if it don't wear, you're going to fight them for like five minutes and then go back to the drawing board and rebuild them again. So you're really, it's really like a, like a, a car game. We're just working on a car, except it's a robot that kills people. So <laughs> it sounds boring and it is boring, but it's awesome. Okay. <laughs> It's like fishing. fishing the most awesome is time you're going to have being born. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's like fishing, man. It's like, I don't know how to describe it. It's it's like surreal, serenity. It's relaxing, building your robot, building parts, shit like that. It's just relaxing doing this stuff. It's like, so, like Minecraft. <laughs> shit. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> that is just saying it. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. Minecraft for old motherfuckers. <laughs> But you do get to go in there. You do get to do robot mech shit and all that. Like, all that's in the game. You get to do all this shit, you know. But that's not what you're going to be doing the most of the time. The most of the time you're going to be doing is just building shit. I need to make my robot cool so I can have him do shit like this. But you're not going to be doing the most other shit like that. So that's all I can say. So, like I said, I'm excited. And it's coming out for PC. So I got to get it. It's the first time an Armor Core game ever came out for PC. I'm going to love it. And that's it. Oh, uh, this sounds like Sims for nerds. Isn't Sims for nerds? I think Sims is for nerds. Yeah. This is... <laughs> but even nerdier than that, I guess. Yeah, so. That, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But now, like I said. Do you remember Cyborg Justice for the Sega Genesis? It sounds familiar. What, what is it? Was it? Like a, it was like a beat-em-up game back on Sega Genesis back in the 90s. But you were, it was a side-scroller beat-em-up. But you were a robot. And you can like pull off arms. You can interchange their body parts, and like give yourself like different arms, you know, and different torsos and legs. That you know, it, it was. Uh, and it, you could suck out. You could like um, absorb energy. So I could. I was after a while. I was able to beat that game without dying on one without dying like on one guy because I could. You could like basically recharge your battery. You can grab a robot. And pull it apart because I knew the moves and shit. I knew all the right. moves, and then you could like absorb their energy, and your life meter would get full again. So I could go through I, that whole game. I feel and, like I heard of it, but it doesn't sound familiar. I'm gonna look it yeah. up, and I'll be, be like, "Oh yeah, that game." Cyborg Justice, Sega Genesis, dope ass game. <laughs> I was on Sega Genesis. I played every Genesis game there was, but yeah. All right, uh, can we go on the next part of the podcast? Sure. Okay, like I said, it's comic book bullies. We're gonna talk about comic books. We're gonna jump into it. You got an ass load of books this week, Eli, so I'm going to let you go. Oh, Some three, of my, man. we're going to put, hell? I thought you had four. You didn't have four? No, I have three, right? I don't know. I put down four, I guess. I don't know what the, I'll tell you what, if I click on it, just review it, even if you didn't read it. All right. Um, well, since May the 4th is coming mm-hmm. up soon this week, I'll start with the Star Wars book. <clears throat> okay. And this is Darth Vader, black, white, and red. Which so they've done this with a bunch of Marvel books. Yeah, so. they've done this before with Marvel characters. Um, basically, the book is just black, white, but it's red. Those are the only colors. Um, uh, and uh, and it, it's just a, an anthology. Um, the first story is by Jason Aaron. It was pretty cool. Um, Darth Vader uh, is after some guys, but the guy figures out how to hack into Darth Vader's suit and basically incapac- incapacitate Darth Vader. And that's a to be continued. So they're actually going to continue this story. Um, 
then of course here's the image from peach momoko momoko momoka peach momoka artist that the gomer and the rest of the guys at this geek and comic they 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 are swooning over peach momoko's art she does a lot of variant covers for for marvel and she's got this sort of very painted anime style of art and her story is basically there's no words it's all visuals and it's just this i don't know if she's a jedi it's some it's some woman having these dark visions of vader so like very weird abstract um panels uh, and then the third story is a it's just vader being a badass um a bunch of like rebels or this crew breaks into an imperial base they're trying to turn uh uh, some sort of weapon onto the Imperials, but the Imperials are having a hard time. They're behind. They're behind schedule. They're having a hard time getting the weapon online, getting it activated, arming this weapon. But then these rebels come in, hack into the system, arm the weapon, and they're right about to blow up the Imperials, but then Vader shows up and says, thank you for arming our weapon for us, and kills the guy. <laughs> <laughs> so that was pretty cool. So it's just three you know, individual three short stories on Vader, just being Vader. Um, so it was pretty cool. Four out of five. And I guess it sounds like they're going to do, there's going to be some more of this, you know, this Vader series. So. Um, okay. So Vader, Black Runner, Red, number two and number three. Yeah. And, I mean, okay. like I said, Jason Aaron's story is going to continue. It looks like. So yeah, I'll give it a four out of five, you know, um, pretty cool. The art is cool. Um, and just seeing Vader do Vader shit. So. As long as he ain't going, no, I'm cool. With it. <laughs> <laughs> They'll bring it back. <laughs> so yeah, uh, four out of five. Cool, cool. All right. So next, well, first issue. First thing I'm going to do is this going to be a doozy. This is going to be a big one. It's going to take a lot out of me. So just give you a heads up. This is going to be Sin's Sinister Dominion number one, even though it's the last issue of this. I was this. about to say, how many of these motherfuckers are there? Right. This this is it. This is the end of the story. So yeah. So this okay. is the last sins of the sinister or sins of sinister. I, I don't know why I put the in it. Um. Uh, yes. Yeah, so that's going on with this book right now. So like I said, we last up all sinister finally found the Moria machine, and he's about to go into it, but he has her to get into it before Beast uh invades, you know, and takes over everything. Well, Beast sends his army and kills everybody. That's the main thing. With that now. Big book. Let's get into it. Uh, the book starts off. Okay, so you have this Ghost Rider. We missed an issue <laughs> right now. Uh, <clears throat> but anyway, Galactus Ghost Rider is actually protecting the storm system is what they call the thing now. You know, uh, while they're doing that, you know, Mr. Sinister, last issue, he killed John Ironfire. That guy's dead. That guy's dead. Everybody's dead. Just Sinister, just standing by himself. And Basically, he finds out that Mori is still alive. So he's just like, Mori, how the hell are you still alive? So he's like, I found the uh I found the base with the where your Moria machines are, but I can't get in there. They locked it up. And now that you killed John Ironfire, we got a way to get in. You're like, oh shit. So, and he's like, damn, well, I killed him, so I can we can't get in there. Meanwhile, she just like, hold up, there uh there might be another way we can get in because I hear something coming. And what did they hear coming? They remembered that that juggernaut bullet they shot at Thanos a thousand years ago is headed towards them. Somehow they knew to put the storm system exactly where it is right now because the trajectory was going to hit by the time juggernaut hits there in a thousand years, he was going to hit exactly there. So what juggernaut did is punch a hole right through Ghost Rider Galactus' head and punch right through the storm system's head and it freed up the Mori machine so now he can get inside. So, yeah. Meanwhile, Sinister gets stabbed, and he gets stabbed by John Ironfire, the guy that he shot in the head last last issue. The reason John Ironfire is dead is because his mutant power is to turn his blood into uh, steel in the metal. So right before Sinister shot him, he turned his blood into steel because he knew Sinister still was still going to do some shit. Like, I'm going to just kill Sinister and just be done with it because I don't need you anymore. Meanwhile, when they do that, Morris is going to walk into there and... Yeah, we cut to Beast, who has an army of, you know, those cuckoos, those sister cuckoos, and he cloned Namors, but they're Namor knots. So they're Namor slash juggernauts. And he got an army of them. 
and they're headed to the storm system right now and it's going to wipe out everything but in meanwhile he realized since they got ghost rider uh galactus there we need help we need help to the one person we can't trust and they decide to trust charles xavier who has cloned a whole bunch of charles xavier's on another planet and he's like oh you need help and since they let down his defenses uh professor Edge took over beast body <laughs> you know i'm drew like a um um a slob control over the sister cuckoos and now he's telling him fight for your dream and what he does is take over ego the living planet and sends that to kill the storm system so yeah so yeah so we got ego about to head over there fighting and sinister trying to tell fire look you ain't got time me ego the living planet control by charge xavier's on his way and you don't have enough power to stop him and he was like what do you mean i don't have stop him you must have forgot my power i would turn my blood in the metal so it's only stop an idea not listen to it so he cuts his head he cuts himself and he turns his head oh well the blood transforms into magneto's mask and he's like oh cool you stole magneto's idea which he stole from juggernaut that's cool but that's still not enough you need more help from me so if you don't kill me i will give you ice man's blood because that will give you control over all the blood air it will give you just enough power to be able to stand a chance to prepare. He was like, okay, well, fine. I won't kill you right now, but I might come kill you later on after I'm done. So he injects him, and that injects him with all the Iceman's blood, which turns him to this big blood monster, and he's headed right for him. And Professor is like, oh, I can feel the presence. Is that Eric? He's like, no, it's not Eric, but Eric wants to tell you something. He was right, and he punches a hole right through Ego delivered his chest you know oh well head i guess meanwhile uh sinister sneaks into moria the moria machine now that the room is open he goes in there sees a whole bunch of dead bodies all over the place and he sees moria uh standing over mother righteous dead body and she's about to take out the sinister so he starts shooting her he's like moria don't do that don't steal the sinister let me upload my brain first and my my thousand years worth of knowledge before you do that because if you don't do that this is going to be a repeat of everything we just saw so they get to shooting this thing like they're trying to shoot each other and Sinister's trying to talk her out of it. Dude, like, look, we figure something out because if we don't do this, Charles Xavier's going to come here and he's going to kill both of us because, you know, we never fit into his dream of what mutant supremacy is supposed to be, you know. So anyway, Charles is sending a whole bunch of Nemoran knots at them. And he's like, look, and Morris is like, OK, fine, go ahead and upload your stuff in there and then we'll just delete this universe and start over. So he's like, OK, well cover my six while he's doing that moria is shooting a whole bunch of namor knots and and uh mr sinis is like okay it's gonna take a second i'm uploading a thousand years worth of information in this computer it's gonna take more than five seconds to do it she's like well you gotta hurry up we don't even have five seconds so he uploads the information he's like you know what instead of me rebooting this universe first how about i become a god because basically he's involved in his other uh backup plan that he didn't tell anybody what he had so what he's got this thing is called uh, what was it called infernal failsafe he's going to infect you know he's going to set off the infernal failsafe and what that is is going to kill everybody in the universe that has his x gene built into him which at this point a thousand years in the future is like five kajillion people it's basically almost the entire galaxy and he's just going to kill everybody uh um, Sinister, sinister's x gene Yes, sinister the the gene that he uploaded into other people and they uploaded into other people, which is like at this point a thousand years in the future, like damn near everybody. So he's going to kill everybody, but not only is he going to kill everybody, everybody that has the X gene X gene is going to load their psyche into his brain, making him more powerful than a god. And when I mean more powerful than a god, he's going to be above a god, he's going to be a dominion. And that's what it comes from so that's what the thing is so he's like don't don't give me that look uh mario we were going to kill this universe anyway but first i need to become um, a dominion i need more powerful than god because that's the whole reason i even did this shit i need a thousand years worth of mutants with my dna to absorb into myself in order to pull this off because that's why that's the only reason i even let it go this far you know so basically that's what he did flip the switch every except three they said three mutants yeah, but they don't put three mutants worth it. Anyway, everybody's dead. Every, I think 
I think that's maybe two right there. But anyway, let's keep going. Uh, everybody's dead, and they absorb all of their psyche and consciousness into him, and he levels up to another plane of existence. So now he's everywhere, every wind, everything, all the stuff like that. He's like, well, I'm going to just escape this reality and just go wherever. I don't even care about this universe. Let it stay. Let it leave. Whatever. I don't care. I can go wherever I want to now. I can hop into another multiverse. I can go to DC universe if I want to. Who cares? <laughs> so he's so he's ready to jump out this timeline, jump out this universe. Before he can do that, he gets blocked. He's like, what the hell? What, what's blocking? What's stopping me from leaving this? And then he realized what happened. Like, oh, shit. Somebody else already did it before me. He was like, who are you? And the voice tells him everywhere, every everything, stuff like that. I'm you from another time, but I'm not you actually another one of the other sinners the other ones like mother righteous and dr stasis and then bobo dude whatever like that it's one of them and he likes but main thing you need to know is that it's not you and boom he pops out of existence <laughs> so now he, <laughs> just like that so now he's back and he's back in uh he's like oh shit i'm back what, what the fuck what happened so basically he wasted a thousand years and killed an entire galaxy for nothing Somebody already beat him to it. Somebody is already outside the timeline. Somebody's already Dominion. And Maury is just like, well, you did that shit for nothing. So, and that's when John Ironfire shows back up. Apparently, Charles didn't kill him. He was like, you killed the galaxy, and now you now you will suffer. And boom, chops his head off. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. So, this was so, a thousand years for nothing. He's just a blade on the floor. And Maury is just like, uh, well, he did learn something. He learned that he's nothing. And now she just shoots the Moria clone. And once you kill a Moria clone, that's it. So they basically, this is the timeline of Moria 7.1. And they basically say how long it lasts, how many people died, and who all, blah, blah, all that shit like that. Anyway, we cut back to basically what happened at the end of Sins of Sinister 1, the first issue. Now we're back there. This is Moria timeline point two, And he's about to, you know, uh, the timeline. He say before I reboot the time. Let me just make sure machine and make sure anything's in. And he checks the machine, he sees that thousand year save point in there. He was like, Oh, there's a thousand year save point on here. There's some good stuff. I wonder what's in this. So before he can get there, he gets this voice from Moria. And Moria's just like, Oh, you fucked up since I already know what she was about to do. Uh matter of fact, and then she tells him what happened in the future because he doesn't know what happened, because like I said, he's he's now, he don't know what happened. So what Moria did is uploaded the timeline into her psyche. She knows everything. So she's telling him, you fucked up. That thing, that planet you had to last a thousand years and become a god and demean, stuff like that. Somebody already beat you. You're nothing. You've already been beaten. So she like, so he realized that even trying to do it is not even worth his time. So yeah, she's like, your story is over. This is my story. And then she kills the Moria clones. But the reason the, the timeline doesn't reset because he realized there was a virus implanted in them first that took away their powers before she killed them. So now there's no more Moria clones. So he can't reboot the timeline. They're stuck wherever they are right now. So, and not only that, that mutant that he created back in the timeline, Rasputin 4, the Moria machine cloned her with all her memories so she remembers everything and she was like sinister you bastard she's ready to kill because sinister screwed over one of those books that we didn't read so she's like i know what to do with you <laughs> that you we know. didn't read right it was so many of them i didn't read so the other one mother righteous in her regular timeline i guess either the old mother righteous in the future or moria matagra i think moria uh mother righteous did it she sent her back the stories of everything that happened in the timeline so this whole wing is the thousand year future that's going to write that so she's just going to sit there and just read everything so she knows what happened in the future so she's like huh ah, interesting so like i said we cut back when mrs sinister killed all the uh like four members of the quiet council and they're about to and destiny's like uh oh the future has changed there's more of it because at this time she thought the future was going to end because that's what happened to Miss Sister Sinister. But now the future's been changed, then it was going to happen. So that's when Rasputin Four shows up with Mister Sinister, and they were like, "Well, thank you. We were looking for that guy because he killed like four of us." It's like, "Well, there, there you go. You can have him. Do what you want with him." So they take Sinister, and Sinister's pleading his case. He's like, "No, you got to understand. 
the dominion is already here. It's everywhere, every wind, everything, and it's not me. I'm the least of your worries. When the dominion gets here, you guys are screwed. And he's like pleading with uh uh like destiny. Tell them you know the future. Tell them that thing. I'm nobody. It's really coming. And she's like, nah. <laughs> and she just gets sucked in. You need me. Look like that. So he gets sucked in with all the other assholes. And that's it. They're out of there. So everything's back to normal. Or is it? Because what happens is that Mother Righteous shows up and says, Mother Righteous knows the future. She basically tells them, uh, oh, yeah, it's a sinister put uh, like in own DNA the four back like professor x uh emma frost and two other people i can't remember what it was who were like yeah you all are infected and matter of fact the infection's so deep you can't even tell if you're infected or not so she's like oh well that's not good so, so basically it's like well what do we do and then professor x is like well there's only one thing we can do uh we're not fit to be on a quiet council because as mr sinister activate us that whole thousand year hell hole he invented is going to start again so there's only one thing we can do so they decide to put themselves in the pit because those are the four that, in, uh, you know, Sinister infected. It's like until we find out exactly how far that Sinister implanted his gene in us, we're not fit to be on the quiet council. So just send us there and until we figure out what's going on, then bring us back. And basically the pit opens up and get them. And, and Storm is just like, well, how do, how do we thank you, uh, Mother Righteous, for saving us? She's like, all you got to do is just say thank you. It's like, okay. Thank you, Mother Righteous. And she so on says thank you while Hope, Emma, Professor X, and Exodus get sucked into the pit with Mr. Sinister. The end. <laughs> so this is how the story ends. So, like I said, a lot of stuff, a lot of meaty, a lot of stuff I didn't realize. So I had to like, go back and reread it. But yeah, this was not a happy ending. This was a screwed up ending, but well, kind of sorta, of, because Sinister is a prick. Right. And Sinister got his in the end, but the x-men got theirs in the end also so I, I is guess. this what like is this was like what hickman was trying to do well, kind of because in in those backstories and those like excerpts hickman was telling stories of what he was trying to do but you had like read all that bullshit didn't know what's going on so it kind of follows that but doesn't follow that because in hickman's run at the end of the universe robots was to show up and supposed to kill everybody but no robot showed up so oh okay yeah but they hinted at it he was like I'm trying to be one of them. So kind of like Hickman, but not Hickman. But anyway, doesn't matter. A few more months, all this Krakoa shit going to get wrapped up anyway. So, <laughs> yeah. So that's it for that. So overall, maybe I would like it more if I read all the stories. Because some of this stuff, I was like, wait, what? what's going on? Well, yeah, because I, I remember like thinking I was going to try and like read this. But then I, I had saw... to like, re- I, I'll be honest I, with you, I, cheat, I cheated. I cheated. I went on Marvel.com. And read their synopsis of this just to make sure I didn't miss anything. <laughs> yeah, I knew the, I saw like the checklist. I'm like, man, I I I can't even afford that, right? Now. <laughs> right. It's a lot of shit. I missed over a lot yeah. of stuff in there. So, like, for instance, where the hell did Ghost Rider Galactus come from? They came from one of them Nightcrawler books. Now, like, man. yeah, Ghost Rider Galactus. Like, what the fuck? Like, right. <laughs> so maybe we missed a story or so. But yeah, that's that's all yeah. I got. There. Like I said, me story, a lot of story. Uh, the only really worthwhile things of this entire book was the storm books. That was it. Everything else was kind of like, yeah, whatever. So, Age of Apocalypse still better than Sense of Sinister. So, and House of M was better than both of them. So there you go. I don't know what X Men villain they're gonna do. It's reality next. I, what do you got? <laughs> Juggernaut. I don't know. It's <laughs> just so. Well, like Beast right now is like a bad. Oh yeah, Beast's right an asshole too. So Beast might rewrite reality. So yeah. Yep, that's all we got. So I, I guess I'll do Daredevil number 10. So is this it? Chip Zdarsky. No, I think there's a couple more, right? I don't know. That's why I started to get it, because I, I heard it's about to wrap up, and I don't know if it's wrapped up now. I know. Or... Maybe, maybe. It could be, or it could maybe there's one more. I don't know. Mm. So this, um, let's see, recap. <laughs> so... Uh, Daredevil and Electra, they're they're leading the Fist, which is this other ninja clan that's supposed to take out the hand. The hand. Right. Um, they can't call him the foot because that's already taken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then um, so but it, and, and to build an army, 
Daredevil busted out a bunch of supervillains and basically recruited them. And then the Avengers are like, okay, can't be doing that shit. So basically Avengers showed up and uh, yeah, they're like, okay, we're here to bring you in, uh, Matt. And there's a big old fight, you know, their armies, the Avengers are there. And uh, you basically get that whole Daredevil is finally becoming Frank Castle, the Punisher, basically saying, you, you, you heroes are kind of naive and don't do enough to fight crime. You're basically part of a broken system that uh, thinking your your way of, you know, your way of doing things is going to change, change everything. And it doesn't. You just keep doing the same shit over and over and it doesn't work. So you guys, superheroes lack the ability to do what's done. And Daredevil's like, I'm willing to do that now, which is mm. who says that shit? The Punisher. Punisher. Yeah. Frank Castle, yeah. <laughs> so he said he has he has, he basically has this conversation with <laughs> Spider-Man, who, you know, Daredevil views Spider-Man as like the ultimate superhero. He's like a totally like probably the best superhero that ever was. You know, mm -hmm. he he wants to do good. He's all about, you know, saving the day and helping people. That's what he generally wants to do. But he's basically a cop. He doesn't make it <laughs> right. <laughs> he even says Put that. Out fires. Yeah. He's he's just basically a cop. Nothing he doesn't really he doesn't. He comes there after the fact. He shows up after the fact and doesn't really prevent crime or look into the deep seated causes of crime and you know societal you know woes that cause crime. You know, he's right. just he's just a band aid. Um, so they have a, they kind of have a fight a fight. You know, they fight it out at what at, at here. Daredevil steals um, uh, Spider Man's little web cartridge and hits it hits him hits his baton with it and basically webs up Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yeah. Um, and then he goes after that book that the, the fist had about prophecies and shit and all that. So that's basically what happens. And then an avalanche comes and I think they, they, they suggest that Matt got swallowed up in the avalanche and shit and just shows his mask at the end. Mm. Um, and yeah, so that's about it. Uh, it, it you know, it, 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 it kind of you know big fight between superhero big superhero fights and uh and just sort of that that philosophical debate between because that's always been you know daredevil versus punisher it's too it's too how do you fight crime daredevil always represented law and order even though he still broke the law and punisher right. always pointed out that hypocrisy it's like yeah the system works hence why you exist Right, <laughs> you know, you 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 claim to represent law and order, yet you break the law. Mm -hmm. You know, hashtag crime. Frank was right. That's what he said. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's sort of. I mean, and Frank's way ain't the way either. I mean, it, it, not nothing they're doing. Both guys don't really go into the what what causes crime. What why do why crime exists it's usually because of right. poverty and struggle right economics it's always yeah. about economics right yeah um and what that that that's never solved they never attack the actual causes of poverty which leads to crime and they're just right. like let's prevent crime and enforce laws and throw people in jail when they break right these laws let's just go to the poorest neighborhoods where they don't where they disenfranchise yeah. having yeah. money and beat the shit out of them so, so yeah. um i did like the little that that sort of commentary of this of this book so uh, and yeah, it's like Daredevil is basically realizing that Punisher, you know, Punisher might be right to a certain extent, but Punisher just goes out and shoots everybody. So it's like, right. like he, his way ain't the way either. So right. <laughs> <laughs> Punisher's a fucking psychopath. So that, that's not, that's not how you do it either. So, <laughs> so but no, I, I did dig this as far as like the little statement it was making and shit. So I'll give it a four out of five. Cool, cool. All right. So next book I'm going to do is uh, Action Comics uh, 1054. Eli, did you read this one? Mm -mm. Okay. All right. So this is another one in that Action Comics, Kalel and the Superman. Because Superman is just by himself, but Action Comics is the whole family. So Okay. Yeah, family. So, yeah, it's about that. Metallo is on the loose again. He's about, oh, the last issue, Superman's adopted daughter went on a uh, killing spree. So, Oh, That's damn. what we picked up from there. No, yeah. I, ha I haven't. I read like the first one or two issues of this, and then I kind and then I just stuck to the Superman book, and then John yep. John's book, and then yeah, the one that's yeah, because John's book about to wrap up too. So <clears throat> let's go right now. So yeah, one of the Super Twins, which is you know new uh, Superman's adopted kids that he adopted from War World, 
So she went on there and just started wreaking havoc. Uh, she, matter of fact, they even think one person might be even dead on the ground right now. They're like, uh oh, Superman wanted Superman to kill, kill somebody. So that's when John and you know her brother shows up. Also, like, what the hell did you do? And she was like, uh, did you kill somebody? He's like, well, that's the thing. He was about to attack somebody. I had to not stop him. She's like, uh oh, I screwed up. I was supposed to babysit you too while my mom was out doing stuff. Now you didn't kill somebody. She's like, no, it's, it's not what you think. You don't understand. She's like, let me go get this guy, take him to the hospital, and hopefully we don't we make this worse than what it already is. So he grabs the guy and she realizes it's a lie. He was like, man, let's go ahead and get you to the hospital. And the whole crowd looked like, wait, you just tried to kill somebody? You know, and that's when the guy says, oh, no worries, Superman. I'm just fine. And it's one of Metallo's, Metallo family people. It, that's why she attacked him because she knew uh, he was about to turn. So it was a whole trap the whole time. And not only is he that way, the whole crowd is. The whole crowd is a bunch of Metallo people. So the whole thing there because like Superman took family members, I'll take his family members. And that's when uh, Clark is just, you know, in traffic, things like that. But he, you know, uses X-ray vision, realizes his kid's in trouble, and he just takes off. Is, is Jimmy there? Oh, Jimmy's not there. But either way, nobody even sees him. He just takes off and it gets so fast, nobody can see him anyway. So you got uh, his kids fighting Metallo's quote to Haitian's kids. And that's when Superman shows up. And he's just like, uh-uh, get the fuck out of here. Oh, no, no Metallo shows up. He's like, oh, you want to fight me, Superman? Because he John calls himself Superman. So he's like, you ain't the real Superman. I want the real Superman. And that's when he beats the shit out of John. And that's when he takes the kids and he teleports out of there. He like, tells Superman he knows where to find me. And Superman finally shows up and he realized that he's gone. And they fight, you know, the more Metallo people should like that. And John's like, no, I got to get the kids back. I told them that they think I hate them. They think I didn't want them around, but it's not like that. So I got to go find them. And Superman is just trying, you know, Clark is trying to tell John. He was like, don't worry about it. I'll get the kids back. I need you to take care of these Metallo people. So can you do that for me? Like, yeah, dad, I can do that. So Superman goes to the sky, goes to Metropolis and uses his super hearing to, you know, to hone in on their they are they can hear two herpes that don't sound like anybody that sound like sound like humans they sound like refugees from our world and he hears one heartbeat that almost sounds machine like so it's got to be metallo and it's like one of old lex Luthor's safe houses so he goes there because he's like metallo's easy to find and he goes there and metallo's got his two kids meanwhile he hears a voice in his back saying kill him kill him john you know because that's metallo's real name and assuming he's like let the kids go and uh and basically he blamed him like uh superman you took my you took my sister if you don't get my sister back i'm gonna kill these kids he's like i don't know what you're talking about metallo obviously somebody controlling you right now so that's when he like puts his kryptonite powers all on superman and you know tries to fight him is some superman really is hurting me but the kryptonite case in some world world technology so he cramp, cripples it and takes it out and realizes the world world technology, somehow world world technology actually powers up Superman, powers him up so crazy that he becomes even more powerful than he's ever been before. And he gets so powerful that he like, telekinetically lifts up Metallo in the air and then <laughs> does some anime shit and turns in and creates the Susano. I think it's called a Susano. That's some shit that uh, Sasuke did in Naruto. I'm going to show you the move. It's this damn move right here where he like forms like an armor around himself, you know, where nobody can touch him. So Superman does that shit. Oh, okay. I see what it is. Yeah. So like, so this is like the third time we've seen Superman just rip off a damn anime power and just use. It. So he turns into like armor himself, grabs Metallo and beats the shit out of him with his armor. Even the kids are like, what the fuck? To make it do that? So, yeah, so Superman's just inventing a new power every comic, every issue now. And Beast of Metallo, Metallo's done. And then he does, like, those those heat vision bullets he does. He like, da, 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 and, like, takes out Metallo, chops his arms off and shit. Is he going to do the done. super lips or the super <laughs> kiss? <laughs> Makes him forget his shit like that. Or, like, yeah. the, you know, the big S where he throws it at him and shit. He throws you the know? S off. Yeah, the big plastic S. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so he exposes the kryptonite thing. And he's like, stay down, Corbin. And that's when he... Uh, and that's when Metallo like, oh, go ahead, Superman, go ahead and finish me off. And he just like, uh, really, uh, John, you really think you really think you don't think much of me, do you? 
like look i use my power to help people and right now you are people that need my help because obviously if your sister's in trouble somebody needs to rescue your sister so he actually picks up metallo's arm and fix it back on metallo's uh chest even though metallo thought he was about to kill him they're like no you need my help and the kids is like huh that's the lesson we need to learn from superman so meanwhile where is metallo's sister we find metallo's sister is trapped in another building somewhere else and she's being held by another superman villain who turns out to be hank henshaw the cyborg superman he has returned and he is a whole trap for both metallo and superman i don't so, think i ever, i don't think i know who that is <laughs> cyborg superman yeah doing the, when superman dies superman return you had the three steel superboy eradicator and cyborg superman is this from like the 90s yeah no i don't know ah you know if i show him you know him. <laughs> anyway <laughs> hank henshaw big thing hasn't really been a thing in the uh oh that 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 fucking name sounds familiar yeah yeah he was like half robot he like a terminator like terminator superman yeah okay you know him you know him. if i show him to it you know him. Uh, but anyway he's back he's the thing he, this wasn't the first time he came back because in one of those dark crisis books he showed up and beat the shit out of john kent so yeah <laughs> so yeah that's it so Overall, cool story. I'm feeling it. So it looked like Metallo and Superman are going to team up next issue. So All right. that's a cool thing. Never seen that before. So. All right. So, yeah. So what you got? Uh, I will do, I guess I'll do this um, Aliens Baw number one. Oh, shit. Wrong one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was going to do this book. I guess I could do this book. I mean, shit. Here, Alien. I'll do alien. alien. Okay. I, I told you <laughs> I told you it was in the book you did. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't gonna do this one. I mean, I got, I, I could. I I mean, just you know, you know, it ain't like we got we don't have time. We're mm-hmm. we, we got doing a good time, so yeah, we're good. Uh, we're good. Yeah, so alien thaw number one. This is a new story arc from Marvel's uh Alien. You they got Alien now, the Alien series. Mm-hmm. But in uh, this like Fox Studio yeah, comics it's, or something. It's one of the yeah. Fox properties. So yeah. alien owner. But I mean, like that that's the, the new imprint. I mean, like yeah. Marvel. Yeah. So this is uh the new story arc, and it involves a family on this ice planet. Um, they're working for some company that is supposedly harvesting water. Um, they're 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 it's this ice planet, so they're basically digging ice and making and purifying it and making water for you know, because the universe needs water, they need water resources, so you know, ice melts and becomes water so they're at a on an ice planet um the daughter finds a, a a face hugger you know the thing that pops out of the egg and jumps on their face and lays the egg down your throat and all that shit she finds one in the ice and she like cuts it out it's frozen brings it back to the lab um uh the dad is like really cautious like why why'd you bring that don't bring it back but um the mom who's pregnant ends up telling their bosses like yo we found this new specimen because she doesn't want to have they've been stuck on this ice planet for like a long ass time they haven't heard from any any uh anybody in months and she doesn't want to have her baby on this ice planet on this frozen world so she wants out so they've been contacting you know you know contacting other spaceships their their bosses like hey come get us but no one's answering um so she finally says well i'm gonna call and let them know that we found this new organism so what happens Waylon yutani the evil corporation shows right up like you know a week later like haven't heard from anybody in months and all of a sudden Waylon yutani shows up and like hey guess what we're Waylon yutani we just bought your company we own your company we own all your research and all that <laughs> <laughs> so this corporate takeover and of course the father's like all pissed off like you know so there's like this family like uh tension because the father didn't want the didn't want the the specimen back didn't want her the wife telling anybody about the specimen and um but, but the wife was just like hey i don't i want off this planet and i, I was hoping to get that whoever shows up will take us take us home because i want to have the baby at home so Waylon Yutani shows up, takes the, basically, we, we own this planet, we own your company, we own all your research, um, and we own that specimen. Um, the, the dad gets pissed, 
Uh, he gets he ends up getting arrested by the Utani Wailing Utani soldiers and shit. But the daughter ends up going into the the lab and basically steals the face hugger, the frozen face hugger, and then takes off with it in her backpack. Meanwhile, it's starting to thaw. The, the uh -oh. face hugger is thawing out, and then it shows that in the ice there's a bunch of frozen aliens in the ice. <laughs> so that's kind of where it ends, you know, kind of a cliffhanger. So. I don't know. I dig it. I'm digging on it. Um, it's just a setup issue. Um, we come to like ex you know, your standard alien story. We're dealing with an evil corporation. We're dealing with you know obviously themes of motherhood. There's a you know the the baby the baby alien. The daughter has the baby alien. The mo her mom is pregnant. Um, so I'm interested to see where this goes. I'm an alien fan, and it, hey, it was 4:26. Alien Day was the other day. Um, 426 is considered Alien Day because of LV 426, the planet in the Alien movies. So oh, yeah, okay. yeah, um, yeah. I'll give it a three out of five. It's a solid start. We'll see where it goes. Cool, cool. All right. Oh, uh, any more books? Um, I read this Clobber in time. I'll just show it for the art because the art is dope. Okay, that's the cool. art is dope. Good. I know you said um, like another um what are you gonna say? Like somebody else is gonna be other than Hulk, but yeah. Oh, it's Wolverine. Yeah, Wolverine this time, yeah. So clobbering time, it's uh Steve Scrochi. He's a dope ass artist. It's his chance to draw all these cool superheroes, and he, he's got a really dope art style. As you can see, here's the cover. Um you can't see Wolverine down there. I can see but, the claws. Uh, yeah, uh, but he he last last issue he teamed up with Hulk. This time he teams up with with, with Wolverine. Um, it's a fun issue. They they they're after this villain who snuck into the Baxter Building and stole all of you know Reed's tech, and now he's got all these powers and shit and all you know a bunch of toys that Mister Fantastic built, and you can see him trying to like pull Ben's rocks off his body and shit. <laughs> so it's them and then, and then wolverine chops off his arm. he turns into a monster at the end and wolverine chops off his arm and it's just all cool dope ass art the writing gets a little wordy he, the artist is he's actually writing this as well he's writing and art and and doing all the art so um so yeah he just gets a little carried away with the words and uh you know you, you can tell he's having fun he's having fun being able to you know play with these toys you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, it's it's just a fun, stupid story, you know, with dope ass art. So four out of five. The next issue is gonna be Doctor Strange. So. Cool. All right. And I'm pretty much booked up. I mean, I did read that new Green Arrow book too. I didn't, I, I didn't read that. I didn't have it. I Even though I was it. all hyped, I want to read. You know why I didn't read? You know why I didn't read the Green Arrow? It's too much. No, no, not too much. Maybe, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> the reason I didn't read it because I realized on DC Universe, they're dropping like those Dawn of DC books. They're dropping them a month after anyway. Yeah. So I'm I like, just I just checked it out and it's it's like a new story arc. I don't know what happened in that Dawn of DC or whatever or Dark Cry whatever crisis they had last. He was like the only one that didn't get killed or some shit. Something like, I don't yeah. know, and he like wakes up on an island. It's an alien island, and I'm like right away. I don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> well, you know they're trying to take it back to you know when he was on. I have to be something else and had to learn. Yeah, all all that shit. It's yeah. the same thing. It's just it different. It's it is a number one. It introduces Roy and uh, Connor and you know the, yeah. the the Arrow family. You know, <laughs> right? So they got their um, whole thing going on. So. Yeah. Um, so I, I really didn't know what was going on and, um, but it, it is a re it is like a reboot, you know, he's setting up Ollie and, and, and his, and his family as, uh, you know, heroes now. So, I don't know. I figured I, 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 yeah, I didn't have much to say because I don't, I'm not very well, very well versed in Arrow in the Arrow verse as much. Yeah. Hey, if you watch CW show, you know, Arrow. Yeah, that's pretty or much Green it. Arrow. I meant to say, or, yeah. or Detective Comics, you know, the Bat Family, the Arrow. It's similar, <laughs> yeah. It's basically like he's always been a yeah. Batman ripoff. This is how it is, so yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it was I, right. you know, I don't know if I'm gonna read the next issue, but I, I decided to just check it out. 
<laughs> I'll check it out when it come on DC Universe. Never mind. Yeah, because like the, the uh, Doom Patrol two dropped, and I was like, mm, I'm good. So, yeah. yeah, I didn't bother reading that either. I was, yeah. <laughs> I like I said, I'm kind of on a budget, so I can only afford so many books. So yeah, yeah. I. Debbie said, like I said, I promised, I promised Jake my Jack Harlow review. So oh. I'm gonna go ahead and talk about. <laughs> is Jake still here? What up, Jake? <laughs> Jake is probably asleep. gone. That's okay. <laughs> but my thing about it, like I just want because I'm gonna save the music reviews at the end of it. So I came on here ready to bash the hell out of this. I like uh, another bullshit Jack Harlow album. I'll be honest with you, wasn't that bad. It's okay. He is very much took the criticism to heart that everybody said about his last album that it sucked. And he basically went back to the lab and was like, you know what? Let me try something. Let me not just be white Drake. Let me actually be me, you know, try some new shit. So he was more authentic on his album. His lyrics were more personal, reflective. He didn't sound like he was just outright blatantly copying and mimicking somebody else. So I was like, okay, I can deal with it. I can deal when a white rapper isn't appropriating another black rapper. I can appreciate that when he's just being him and that's it, you know. Um, so so yeah. I think you're not a fan of Action Bronson then? <laughs> I want to like them, but I can't like them, but I do like them. It's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> I like Bronson his is, videos. <laughs> yeah, I like his video. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Because I think I started listening to Action Bronson before I knew he was white. I'm sorry. I don't, for some reason, <laughs> I just yeah, don't this, like, this I, new Ghostface album is dope. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. I thought, like, this Ghostface is jamming. Like, hell, you know, like, hell yeah. They're like, oh, that's not Ghostface? Uh-oh. All right. <laughs> I feel bad now, you know? <laughs> Uh, that being said, the thing that well, I want to bring oh, there to you, go, oh, Jake yes, right Jake. there. There you go, Jake. Okay, so yes, the, J- the Jack Harlow album did not suck. I actually recommend it. It was actually a smooth, nice 10 album list. It's like it's like 20 minutes. It's something he just pretty much just knocked out. It wasn't like a it's not even an LP, it's an EP. So easy breeze. You can listen on the car ride to work. Now, my thing about this with Jack Harlow said that I don't appreciate that. He said he was the best white rapper since Eminem. And I'm like. I don't know about that. Like you said, Action Bronson. (laughs) Bubba Sparks. But my favorite white rapper other than Eminem, because I'm from the South, I got to say this, Paul Wall. Another white rapper we didn't know. about. Now, Paul Wall, nobody knew he was white. He was just rapping. He was like, yeah, it's jamming, it's jamming. Then he showed up on a video like five years later, and everybody was like, what? He was like like a white dude with gold teeth and shit. We were like, we didn't know. know, so, So... well, That's I'm, the thing. I'm up here in the Twin Cities. We got Atmosphere and Brother Ali. And, no, no, uh, I'm not. <laughs> Rock, you gotta, you, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Tons of white rappers up here. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, not I, too I, many down I, in I'm not. Side. I'm not a big fan of them. Especially, I know Atmosphere was huge up here in Twin Cities. He just writes, I mean, I don't mind. I don't mind. It's just. It's all about girlfriends and shit. I don't. Yeah, I can't. It's no. <laughs> writing about his exes, all rapping about his exes and shit. It's yeah, like, so Jack, Har- Jack Harlow wants to call himself the second best white rapper. Fine, go for it. Okay. Cool, me. All right, what up? You know, they got to flex. They got to. Every, every, every rapper has to say they're the best, this, best, that. Yeah. Okay, I get it. Whatever. You know, whatever. <laughs> You're not Paul Wall. That's all I'm saying. But yeah. Well, LP right. from Star Zarface. Zar- Zar- oh yeah, LP. We got we've got our LPs. Yeah. Uh, no, not run L- the jewels. LP. Um, yeah, run, run, run the, the jewels. jewels. Run the jewels. Yeah. Yeah, run the jewels. LP. I'm thinking Esa, uh Esoteric. Is that his name? Zarface. Zarface. Oh, with, with is he white? Inspector Deck. Yeah, the other guy. Is he white? Yeah. <laughs> just, 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 just like he, 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 he it's just I know it's, it's Inspector Dick and another guy. That's all I know. <laughs> and a white guy. <laughs> Not a white guy. I just knew it was just another guy. I was like, whatever. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah, cool. But yeah. Uh Alchemist. I think Alchemist is white. Is white is Alchemist white? Yeah. If Alchemist is white, he's up there. Yeah. Yeah. You put an album. If, if Alchemist is there, then okay, Jack Harlow, you keep going lower and lower and lower down the list because you're not those guys. So but then there's like Ill Bill and all that Lakoka Nostra guys. They're like the white Wu Tang, Slain and fucking Vinny Paz, and that's all that Philly, the East Coast. Those, yeah, you, know, you never heard of that shit? No. Oh, <laughs> Izzy, nephew Izzy, he loves all that. Look, Army of Pharaohs and 
Snow Goons, all that Philly, Vinny Paz, Slane. Slane's been in some movies. He was in uh, The Town. And that's the thing that gets on me about that. A lot of white rappers, the first thing they do, put out an album, and all of a sudden, they're in movies. Marky Mark. Well, well, they put, so, well Slane put out several albums <laughs> before, so, he, before he ended up in movies. Okay, just making sure, you know. <laughs> I don't want to be another Mark Wahlberg and Lil Dicky and, you know, but that, cool as but ice, he's, vanilla he's only ice been like in a couple movies. Like the okay. town came out like ten years ago. <laughs> it's still, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's my thing. But yeah, all right. So I think we said enough about it. Like I said, Jack Harlow. I reckon. I don't know if we're gonna see White Man Can't Jump. I don't know. You cannot remake that movie without Rose Perez. Sorry, that's my thing. But yeah. Or Woody uh, Harrelson or Wesley Snipes. You're whatever. Rosa Perez. You can't remake it without Rosa Perez. That's all I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was around the time when I was just becoming a teenager and I saw Rosa Perez. I'm like, okay, yeah, that's, yeah. Oh, Jake says Vinny Paz. I don't know who these people are. I'm sorry. Yeah, just... that's from, like, yeah, that whole crew, of East Coast Philly. Let me just throw a three six mafia. I, I, you know what? Just <laughs> keep my mouth. Uh, that being said, if you listen, they're saying this is Leroy, it's Eli, and be good to what's what's the quote? What's the quote? Be good to each other and each other. I fucked it up already. What, what are you quoting? Jerry Springer. Oh, now nah, I fucked it up. What is it? Be good to be, be excellent to each other. That's Bill. No, that's that's not it. That's not it. I can't remember it. Damn it. Oh, uh, Jack White is a new Mike White Man Can't Jump movie, right? Which is one reason I'm not gonna see that movie, yeah, because no Rose Perez and Jack White, Jack Black, Jack Harlow, one of them. There is a Jack White, isn't it? <laughs> I think there is a guy named Jack White. What are we talking about, anyway? Jack White, <laughs> oh, from the White Stripes, <laughs> from the White Stripes. I remember there is a guy named White Jack, Jack White, there's a Jack, Jack White, and there's a Jack White. Black, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jack Black, Meg White. <laughs> <Jack White. laughs> uh, anyway, be kind to each other. Be excellent to each other. I can't remember what Jerry Springer said, but yeah, something like that. Sinora, shake your body line. Shake, 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 Sinora, shake it all the time. Work, 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 Sinora, work your body line. Work, 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 Sinora, work it all the time. My girl's name is Sonora. I tell you, friends, I adore her. And when she dances, oh brother, she's a hurricane in all kinds of weather. Jump in the line, rock your body on time. Okay, I believe you jump in the line, rock your body on time. Okay, I believe you jump in the line, rock your body on time. Okay, I believe you jump in the line, rock your body on time. Whoop. Shake, 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 Sinora, shake your body line. Whoop. Shake, 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 Sinora, shake it all the time. Work, 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 Sinora, work your body line. Work, 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 Sinora, work it all the time. You can talk about cha-cha, tango waltz or the rumba. Sinora's dance has no title. You jump in the saddle, hold on to the bridle. Jump in the line, rock your body on time. Okay, I believe you jump in the line, rock your body. Rock your body, child. Jump in the line, rock your body in time. Somebody help me. Jump in the line, rock your body in time. Whoop. Shake, 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 Sinora, shake your body line. Shake, 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 Sinora, shake it all the time. Whoop, 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 Sinora, work your body line. Yeah. Work, 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 Sinora, work it all the time. Sinora, she's a sensation, the reason for aviation. And fellas, you got to watch it. When she wind up, she bottom, she go like a rocket. Jump in the line, rock your body in time. Okay, I believe you. Jump in the line, rock your body in time. Heist those skirts a little higher. Jump in the line, rock your body in time. Off the chimney. Jump in the line, rock your body in time. Whoa. Yes, 
Shake, 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 Sinora. Shake your body line. Work, 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 Sinora. Work it all the time. Dance, 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 Sinora. Dance it all the time. Work, 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 Sinora. Work it all the time. Sinora dances Calypso. Left to right is the tempo. And when she gets the sensation, she go up in the air, come down in slow motion. Jump in the line, rock your body and time. Okay, I believe you jump in the line, rock your body and time. Somebody help me! Jump in the line, rock your body and time. Okay, I believe you jump in the line, rock your body and time. Oh. Shake, 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 Sinora, shake your body line. Shake, 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 Sinora, shake it all the time. Whoa. 